Hey, good morning guys. I'm the Tech Prepper. First, I hope everybody's uh, doing well. Um, we're seeing lots of growth. So thank you for everybody who is watching these videos and uh, contributing to the content on this channel through the comments. I really do appreciate that and I try to respond to each and every one of them. Uh, this video today, I don't know if it's going to appeal to everybody, but uh, I'm gonna talk about uh, DC systems for prepping and for ham radio. And I have been experimenting with a mini solar power plant system. I'll put links below to the video where I describe that system. But one of the components I have in there is a DC to AC inverter. And the reason why I have that component in the system is to power AC appliances off of my battery. And I had a few uh, viewers comment on that system, uh, basically saying, hey, if you're going to plug in a DC appliance into the inverter through a uh, AC adapter, you're losing some efficiency and actually quite a bit. So that got me thinking. And uh, what I want to do is uh, really just talk about that and do I really need an inverter as part of my system? And uh, I'm starting with the small system I have right now and my short answer is probably not. So the inverter I have is a very inexpensive 400 watt inverter. It's part of my mini system. And I was looking at the specifications and it only works at 85% efficiency. So based on the input coming in from the battery, I'm only getting 85% output uh, AC. So if you think about it, I have this four amp hour BioWino battery. And if we just do the simple math of 85% efficiency, and that's maximum efficiency, so it's probably a lot less. I'm actually looking at getting 3.4 amp hours out of this battery. So I'm losing uh, 600 uh, milliamps here. And then, uh, you know, the same thing, same thing applies even to the larger, larger battery. So this is a, a 12 amp hour battery. So again, only at 85% efficiency. If I bring in one of my larger RV 100 amp hours, it means I'm only going to get 85 amp hours uh, out of that system. So I'm really moving towards eliminating the inverter from my systems. So what am I trying to power where I thought I needed the inverter? So this is a very old uh, Linksys router. This is the classic WRT54G, and it has an AC power adapter. Now what's interesting is that uh, most people don't realize this. This is a DC powered device. The reason why we have this adapter is we're trying to plug it into a standard home 110 AC outlet. Uh, if you do read this very carefully, you'll notice that the input voltage is 120 volts AC. So that's the receptacle in your house. The output voltage is 12 volts DC, which is exactly what these batteries use at a draw of uh, one amp. My ham radio, the charging cradle, also has a power adapter. And if I take a look and read the back here, uh, again, the input voltage is uh, 120 volts uh, AC, and the output is 12 volts, and this one is at 500 milliamps. So the question is, do we really need these guys and do we need the inverter? Well, the short answer is no. So these actually are no longer needed. I just need these two for my system. And what I have done here is in the first run, I found another 12 volt uh, adapter and uh, I went ahead and I snipped off the end of the, the cable and I went ahead and crimped on my own set of Anderson power poles. And what this allows me to do is plug this directly into my battery. And now we can actually use all four amp hours. And the light should turn on. I don't know, don't know if you guys will be able to see that blinking light on camera, but it is on. And that was a pretty interesting experiment for me. And that proved to me that the system works. And now I don't have to worry about uh, my solar panels working so hard to continuously top off the batteries because I don't need to lose that uh, 15 
percent due to the inverter. So the system ultimately is way more efficient. Now, as I was making this cable, I realized not everybody has the tools to crimp this on. Um, it also can be a bit of a pain. This cable uh, was actually, I believe, maybe 18 gauge wire, and it didn't have a whole lot in the way of copper strands. And for me to even crimp on the small 15 amp Anderson power pole connectors, uh, took a little bit of work. So this was the custom route. Uh, you can do this, it works just fine if you wanna cannibalize an existing adapter. But what I did was I actually did a search online and I ordered this one from Valley Enterprises. And this is a 2.5 millimeter uh, male DC connector. And it's already has the Anderson power poles. And this is a quite a bit more substantial. Uh, can't recall which gauge wire this is. It's probably 16 or 18 gauge. I'll put the correction on the screen. And it just works the same way. It's a little bit more beefy. So this is another great option. I believe that cable ran me maybe uh, eight or nine bucks. So that's working pretty well. So let's take the system one step further. And I have my cradle for my Yesu FT60R. And just like before, we can read the specifications on the input and output voltage and make sure that we're in fact working with 12 volts. Now the connector on this guy is a little bit different. It doesn't work with a 2.5 millimeter uh, male plug. So I had one of these lying around. Uh, you could buy these on Amazon probably like 10 for maybe three bucks. And it basically converts down to a 2.1 millimeter adapter. So I can easily now connect this guy. And we have a very nice mechanism now to charge our handheld radio. All right, so the last piece in this equation, guys, um, I did also receive some feedback that to protect the equipment, we probably should go ahead and uh, have an inline fuse. So I spent a little bit of time and I uh, had these in my uh, toolbox, uh, but this is just an automotive uh, fuse holder. Um, I did trim down the size uh, quite a bit and uh, it's 10 gauge wire. And then I took another uh, piece of 10 gauge uh, stranded copper uh, black wire and it crimped on Anderson power poles. And now I can actually insert any size fuse I want. So for a lot of these devices, uh, they, they're they anywhere from 500 milliamps to one amp. Uh, so depending on what I need, I will go as low as one amp fuse here. And I've purchased uh, three amp fuses, five amp, 7.5, 10, you name it. So what's great about this system is now I can actually assuming I have the correctly sized fuse for my application, I can now run some protection in line. So that's kind of what I've been playing with uh, is just trying to see how much I can push my DC system. Uh, the reason why it's important is I'm working on building a much larger system for my house. I have 200 watt or two 100 watt panels that arrived. I've got 80 feet of uh, solar cable that came in and I decided not to purchase my inverter and I'm gonna hold off on that and the goal was for me to power a my water pump for the holding tank for the pressure tank and my refrigerator instead what I'm going to be doing is doing my research and uh, purchasing either a 12 volt or 24 volt uh, DC deep freezer to start and I'm gonna run the whole system straight off of a 12 volt battery system. So that's the plan. So even this little tiny experiment, while it may not seem all that interesting, um, I believe there are some applications for the ham radio community that deals with devices like this. Uh, but it also gets you thinking about the, uh, the bigger projects and you know how efficient we want to get our systems. And by not having any losses in the inverter, um, it really allows us to have a smaller system altogether, which will ultimately reduce cost. All right, guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared.